Okay, and here we go, our pinwheel foil technique. I'm sectioning out a large oval section at the top of the head. Now, the color I'll be using is a level six red red with 40 volume developer. Now, for this pinwheel technique, there's certain concepts that you have to get around your head. First, we're working in a circular manner. Second, every foil begins at that same point and we pivot off each foil. So kind of think of like the, the spokes on a bicycle tire or the manner in which, in which a pizza sliced up. Okay, so one of the key elements with using these techniques is that you have to constantly think about natural fall. And as the hair falls naturally, since we're, I'm working in a big oval manner, that distribution of the weight of the color is totally incredible. It allows me the benefit of using less foils with more coverage. So it's like that 80-20 rule in effect again. Okay, so each quadrant, say like that big oval section, I'll break into four pieces. So we'll look at four quadrants. With this technique, per quadrant, I'll be using four foils. So since uh, there's four quadrants in this entire oval large section. This total technique, I'll be using 16 foils, which is pretty awesome. So I'll get into the technique. So through the back, I'm doing the, I'm taking my slices quite, quite organic, quite natural, not too thick, not too thin. But I intend to build up the color as I move towards the front. Okay, so with this last foil, through the back, now moving up to the front. So I'll start to build up my color. So notice how my slice is getting thicker. The fun part about this technique is that since I'm working with a circular, large circular section, I can build up the color, I can build down the color, I can build it back up. I have a lot of creative options and I don't get like a heavy corner when the color falls naturally. So another key point when you, you're using this pinwheel technique is the manner in which you slice or weave the hair. Now this is essential. So listen up. Since we have so many sections starting at the same point, as you slice or weave the hair, you have to slice the hair in a manner that goes from fine to thicker. So the point of origin where every, where every section begins at, that point, you have to go in and slice the hair or weave the hair finer, and then weave it. You can build out the thickness of your weave or your slice. Because you have to look at mathematically, if I slice everything evenly, at the end of my technique, I'll have 16 spoils that originate at the same point, and that's way too many like color sections intermixing. So I'll end up with this gigantic, in this case, red dot on the top of her crown and that would look totally awful so remember when you're using this technique in principle you need to again at the point of origin slice thinner to wider and that's about it but beyond that little key detail this technique is super super fun it's highly applicable and I suggest once you get your head around it just to start just jump right into it so remember, through the front area, I'm building up the color. So I'm, use, I'm slicing the hair thicker than I have sliced it when I was in the back area. So you're working with clean foils. And as I work this technique, I like working around the head. That's, only, that's the best way that I found to execute this technique. And I've been doing this for over two decades. So. Just work around the head, and you're, you'll you'll be fine. There's a, you know six in this scenario. There's 16 sections, but if I wanted a softer effect, I could take you know five foils or six foils per quadrant. Okay, and so remember, um, as I work back into the back area, I want to start building my color down. So this will be the last section where I actually take the foil quite heavy. From here on, I'll start to slice the hair finer and start to build down my color. So my intent is 
with my very last slice, it'll be the exact same thickness and angle as the original slice. Because again, with this technique, you work into yourself so you finish off exactly where you start. You're still working around the head. Place a foil at the root. I hit the mid shaft and roots first. When I get near the roots, I'm a, a lot more careful and gentle. Then I'll lift the hair, drop the hair, lift the hair. I like to have the hair and product all within the same area. So I aim for keeping everything within that 50% mark within my foil. Okay, with our final section. So notice how I said we finish with this, we finish off where we start. So it's a really cool technique. So then again, my final slice is just as thin as my original slice. So I build the color down, I build it up, and I can build it back down again. Okay, and there we have it. There's our pinwheel technique. It looks quite awesome too. Uh, we'll do a 360 here. So as the client's processing and they're looking in the mirror, they're like, well, well, that's kind of original. It, it's, it looks nice. I think I look when I sell, and it's a super awesome technique. Okay, so I'm going in between, and I'll be using a natural three with a 1.5 developer, just deposit, um, just to, because you have some pre-existing color. So I'll just try and keep the chemical on the parts that were colored before. Um, less is more, so I really, I think her last color was a foil, so I just go in through those ends and hit those ends mainly. Just working out that old color. All right, well, there you have it. Our red pinwheel technique. Enjoy.